So welcome to part two of this satisfying loop animation of where we're making the sawmill loop. If you haven't already seen part one where we do the modeling and the animation, go ahead and watch it. This is gonna be part two where we do the materials and the lighting and make this look really cool. And as always, my final result will be up on Patreon. All of that is in the description below. So let's jump in. So the first thing you're gonna do is download these two textures from Polyhaven. They're completely free and you don't even need to create an account. So you can go ahead by default, it's set to the blend file. So it's just gonna download a zip and inside of there is a blend file. And you can also change the resolution. So it'll have everything set up, you just have to append it. So both of these will be in the description and another one is just this um, concrete pavers and this plywood here. So just keep that in mind. Once you have those two downloaded and you have the zip files extracted somewhere in the computer, you're gonna jump back in to our scene from part one. And now let's go over to our render engine. Let's change it to cycles. If you have a GPU, I recommend you use it. And then under your render settings, let's just make the max samples 55. You can go with something higher, but because I'm doing a tutorial, I'm just gonna keep it on the lower end. In camera view, we're gonna go control B and just drag over our camera to limit rendering to the camera. And then we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna go over to our light options and we're gonna go add in an area light, G, Z, move it up and let's go to our light settings and give it a strength of 250. And let's increase the size a little bit. So now if we go Z and we go rendered, we can see this is what we have. I'm gonna go and take my light up a little bit higher and then I'm gonna go ahead and just rotate the light in like so a little bit. Okay, that's looking nice. And then in my top view, I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate and right to rotate in like so. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And this is kind of nice lighting at the moment. It gives us, you know, some nice um, kind of like shadows under here. It gives a bit of contrast with that lighting placement. But if you go over to your world properties, you can go to your color over here and let's give this a sky texture. And now we have a sky texture in here, but even better. You can go, um, and this is optional, but you can even go and add in an environment texture. And then you can add in your own um, environment. So there's plenty of free HDRIs online. I already have some on my library, but just saying, you know, if you guys want to do that, you could do that. But if you don't, just stick to the um, sky texture. It'll do a perfectly good job. We're now gonna go Z and go render it. Now we can now see we have some nice lighting. You can control the strength however much you like with your whichever option you've gone with. But the idea here now is that we ha are ready to go. So let's go a file and let's go append. And I already know where I've downloaded these two zip files. Okay, where I've extracted them. So I'm gonna go on my computer and get that. So I'm gonna go to the first one, which I know where it is, which is gonna be the plywood. And over here it is. So this is the zip file I extracted. Inside of there is a blend file. And then you're just gonna go to the materials and then click on a plywood and go append. And then you're gonna go file and you're gonna go append again. And then you're gonna get the second one, which you should have downloaded, which is the square concrete pavers. Click on that file. Inside is the blend file, click on it. Then go to the material and then you'll see square concrete pavers. Click on that and append it. And now what we can do is we're gonna select some objects here. So let's select this box over here, under here. Let's go to our materials. Let's go to drop down and give it that square concrete pavers. And let's now tab into edit mode, press A to select everything and go U. And let's go smart UV project, I think would be a good way to go for now. And then go OK. And now if we go Z and we go material preview, we can see this is what we have. Let's just now go into our UV editing. Let's just select everything and go S to scale it up a little bit until we kind of like the scale. Or we can just leave it smaller like this, just as it did by default. And then we can just go into our shading workspace. And this is just, I'm just showing you guys both ways you can do this. And probably a better way to do this is just to come over here to these scaling vectors and just grab these guys and change their value here on the scale. So I'm gonna make all of these two like so. And you can actually leave this as the color that it is. But for me, I'm gonna go over here where the base color comes out. I'm gonna go shift A search and get a color ramp, place it over here. And then I'm gonna drag this value down here a little bit. And I'm just gonna go with a nice kind of blue, like so. You guys can change it to whatever you wish. But that's what I'm gonna go with. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this actual floor over here. I'm gonna to go to the drop down and give it that square concrete pavers as well. And tab into edit mode. A to select everything and I'm gonna go U and go smart UV projection, go okay. 
Tab back out. Now if we go Z and we go rendered, we can say that shares the same material. But what I'm gonna do is just go into my UV editing with this one. And over here, I'm just gonna grab everything and just scale it a little bit till it matches the scale of these ones over here, just roughly. So something like that looks good. I'm gonna tab back out. And now I'm gonna to come to my drop down here. I'm gonna go plus, come to the drop down. Now I'm gonna add that plywood that we imported. Tab into edit mode and then just select all of the top floors over here like so. And then we're gonna go click on the plywood and go ahead and assign that. And now we have the plywood running here as well. So that's already starting to look really cool. So now if we go into our camera view and we go Z and we go rendered, you can see it's already starting to look quite nice. So now a few more things, let's go back to our layout. Let's now grab our slab over here. Let's go ahead and give that a new material. It already has one because we created it from the default cube. So let's just call this material one. And let's just go and let's make that a yellow color, color like so. We also wanna grab this end bit here. So make sure we go over to frame one. Let's grab this little end bit that's been cut off. Let's make sure it has that same material, which it does. Okay. And then what we need to do is we need to go ahead and let's just start with the end bit here. The little guy, let's just go plus create another material on that and call it two. And let's make this one kind of like a bluish kind of color. Tab into edit mode and then just select this face in here and this face at the back. And go ahead and assign that second material. Tab back out and then go H to hide this thing and then grab this block here and then select this end face here. Go plus, come to the drop down, give it that second material and go ahead and assign and then tab back out and then go Alt H. So now we should see this. Okay, it's looking pretty good. And another thing we can do is just grab, turn off our junk layer. Remember we added the empty and just cut our object to the junk. Let's just turn that off. We don't want to see them in the render or the um, viewport display. And now what we're gonna do is grab our saw. We're gonna go give that a new material, call it saw. And then let's come make it metallic. And then let's bring down the roughness quite a bit. Now the thing that's gonna make this look even better is if you go to the internet and you get a picture of a saw, and I'll quickly show you guys this. So here is an image, a JPEG that I downloaded of a saw, or just on Google, I just typed in saw. You can grab any one that you want. Just put it somewhere on your computer. So I'm just gonna put it on my desktop. And then what you can do is you can go into Blender and you can see here, just out of the default, this is what the metal looks like. But if you now go to the base color and you give it an image texture and you go open and you find a saw image and go open. Then you just go into your UV editing, go into your right orthographic view and in edit mode, you select everything and you go U and you go project from view. And then you can go ahead and line your saw up to your reference like so and just adjust it accordingly. And then over here, if you now go Z and you go rendered, it's gonna look a lot better because of that. So there we have a saw blade. Um, now let's just grab this slider here. Let's just go new, let's just give that a metal. Let's call it metal. Let's go ahead and make it metallic and let's bring down this roughness. Let's make it a little bit darker. You can also find an image texture of some metal and then add it to that if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna leave it like a simple metal material. I'm gonna grab these two poles and give it that same metal material. And then also just this uh, metal sleeve in the inside here, we're gonna go grab that and give it the same metal. And that's already looking really, really cool. And we can now grab the shaft over here, come to the drop down and give it a metal material as well. And already you're seeing this is looking really good. So let's go back to our layout. And another thing you can do optionally is bring in some plants. Now, if you go over to polyhaven.com, you can go to the assets and go to the 3D models under polyhaven.com. And you're gonna see there's all sorts of free assets and models you can download, including some plants. So go ahead, download a blend file of one of these. I already have my own one that I have, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. And then you can just simply go in Blender and go file, append, and add some in. So I'm gonna go ahead to where I keep some of my 3D assets. And I'm gonna have grab one that I always like to use. You guys can use whatever. And then you can add in some plants. A good place to place them are kind of over here, as you can see over here. And you can, um, one thing I did with mine is I added a material to it and I assigned it to the pot. So I assigned that new material to the pot and I called it pot. And then I just came and made it like a nice saturated yellow and then that kind of just matched with the theme of what we're doing here. 
with so that's kind of what I did with my original and then I just brought down the roughness a little bit and then I just kind of grabbed it and moved it around duplicated it now there's all sorts of ways you can do yours to make it look unique but you guys kind of get the idea here um, any sort of asset you can add in to make yours look better is something that is always going to be nice and then once you have things all ready um, you can now either start rendering it out or you can add even more details you can see here this is my original I just modeled these simple little rollers like this that I added here just a cylinder that I extruded added a mirror modifier and then just added these little cylinders and then just duplicated it two more times so something very simple like that and I just duplicated my pots and that's about it also just added in some more lights just tweaked them a little bit till I like the result um, there's all sorts of ways you can um, you know tweak things a little bit to make it look the way you want and this is kind of like the result I ended up with so this is the one that's going to be on Patreon but more or less it's the exact same thing we've kind of made over here like this so if you're ready to render out you're going to go to your output properties go to your output select your desktop or wherever and then you can change the file format to FFmpeg video and under the encoding you can change it to mp4peg and then you can save and then you can go render and render out your animation but for now I'm just going to give this by the way also make sure you go to your render settings very important and enable motion blur as well so now if we just get a random shot and we go render and render the image we should be able to see this is what we have you can see we have some nice motion blur on the saw blade and everything is looking really nice so I really hope you guys have enjoyed this two-part motion graphics tutorial on how to do the satisfying saw slice animation in Blender. Keep in mind, my original will be up on Patreon, but it's more or less what I showed you how to make here today. So I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial, and thank you for watching.